run feed off the stick of McGing and deep into the Islanders zone. McGing gets tripped up behind the net by Ledoux and the first penalty of the night will go to Bridgeport just a minute and 45. Get out of the air and then Hofer had to make a save as Arno Durando swung at a puck in midair and got it on goal and then Durando got finished off into the end boards by Tucker. Durando on all fours a little slow to get back to his feet. No call in front. Hofer with the paddle down blocks the centering attempt and puts a mid on top of it. 50 left the and another penalty coming against Bridgeport. And then Terry got blasted right in front of the bench by Washkrick, and that's going to bring about quite the melee. I think Kean Washkrick, unfortunately, just cost his team a power play. That's a situation there where I know Kean Washkrick is trying to stay engaged in the game physically and show that ability to stand up for a teammate, but a lot like Huma Gang last night, there's a time and a place for it, and unless the referees missed it, and I find it hard to believe that they would have, I think this will no longer be a power play for Springfield. As Terry had his now in center. Oh, we're going to get more rough stuff. Terry's in the middle of it again, right by the Springfield bench door near Vadim Jarenko, the backup. Right wing to the net, fires Hofer the same, and then Hofer gets barreled into. After the play was over, the net came off the moorings. Kubiak fired it toward what would have been an empty net, but the net was well off the moorings, so it will not be a goal. That was just a curious play because Kessel didn't want to take an intentional offside. Then turned it over to Holscher in neutral light. 6-4 to go on the first, and now we're going to get a scrap. Prince and Ledoux. It was a matter of time before one of these. They're in tight right now. Ledoux trying to get right hands free. Prince with a small size advantage here. Prince got one good right hand over the back of Ledoux's head, and they both go down to the ice rather quickly, which will bring in the linesman to separate. Well, we have already had 22 minutes in penalties on Isotopes night here inside the Thunderdome, and we're not even 14. The one-timer kicked away by Hofer. Big rebound, and Durando scores. Hofer was trying to get back across the crease, but just could not get there in time. Our just really eats up these rivalry type games and he hasn't just done the damage with his chirps and with his body checks he's done it on the score accepted and get a whistle and then Durando arrives on this scene at the end of the play Highmore, Lyle, Koivala all together as well what I thought was going to be kind of a nothing situation has turned into quite a shoving match for Highmore and Koivala Koivala still not done going after Highmore doesn't want to shoot yet. Do four in the slot. Durando a shot. He scores again. Looked like the Springfield penalty kill just got lulled. To so just really eats up these rivalry type games. And he hasn't just done the damage with his chirps and with his body checks. He's done it on the score. Alexandrov into the offensive zone on the right wing. He gets hip checked by Savigny. In the middle around Santini. Thompson got a bad angle shot away. Hope made the save. Couldn't control the rebound. And now we're going to get a penalty at the side of the net. I think we might get matching penalties here as Tucker was tied up with Jenkins. McLean jumps in after the fact. And we get another congregation in behind Hofer's goal. This has certainly been one of the meaner spirited games of this season. On Callum, the forward back defensively, do four follows and fires and scores. Once again, great goal. Rolls it dangerously to the right side, and Durando was there to pick off Neighbors. And Durando thrown heavily into the Neighbors down left wing, battling a rolling puck circles, then it wraps it home and scores! <laughs> Jenkins just sends it in deep. Savigny up on the play left side. Defenseman all the way to the goal line, pursuing Jenkins, a bad angle shot, gloved by Hofer, as Barjo briefly had a step in front of the net as McLean and Tucker now. Steven Santini looking, wristing it into traffic, they score! Callen on the redirect, it's 3-2! Entering Lyle in front, Lyle around the goal, drops it in front, and it stays out, Schneider down, it's still loose, poking at its side of the goal, Alexandrov, he gets it out front, nobody home. Got around Kessel left side, Kubiak centering, Brown scores! Four 
short zone on the right wing. Burke fakes the rest, their circles and centers in front. They score! Highmore! And it's a one goal game again! Back down the wall. Burke deflects it along for Highmore. Now Pekka right wing corner. Pekka centers in front. Tucker scores! up a little bit in the third a wild one here inside the Thunderdome tonight for the shot hole for the save he's bumped into by Koivala but he maintains his concentration and covers 348 remaining in the third of the floor shooting hole for the save he gets the rebound and swallows it up middle around Kessel got to the front fired a forehander and Hofer made the save McGing, down the middle around Kessel, got to the front, fired a forehander, and Hofer made the save. McGing dodging away. Overtime, Neighbors waiting, flipping it in front, looking for Pekka, scared away by Schneider. Firing Neighbors, he scores! From three, nothing down! At the midpoint of the game, to scoring five of the final six, the win streak lives on. It's a snowman, eight in a row, and Jake Neighbors has his second winner against the Isles. Five, four, ice. Springfield Thunderbirds Hockey on News Radio.